Hello and welcome everyone, it's Shari again from SFR. Today, because of a subscriber uh, wanted it with a guide for Weaver. Here you see my little Weaver, I'm at the moment at the Mystic Bastion and we will start with the traits really quick. The traits are Fire, Fire with Lesser Cleansing Fire for Cure Condition and Burn Foes with Power overwhelming while at above and might their hold. Get increased power. Power bonuses are doubled while attuned to fire, so you're st getting more power when you're stacking to fire. And you're going for Pyromancer's Puissance. Gain might for using any skill while attuned to fire. So every time you're in fire, you get might. Every time you get might, you get through the other thread more power because you are attuned to fire. You go secondary for a cane. You go for a cane for renewing stamina again weaker when you critically hit the foe and you critically you hit a lot of crits as a as a weaver to be honest. Lesser a cane shield for block attacks while an energy shield if it blocks three attack it explodes. Cast lesser shield on the threshold so you get a 6000 shield when you get at the threshold. And bountiful power deal increased damage for each boon on you and you have a lot of boons on you as a weaver. Then you take weaver with Master's forti uh, Fortitude for gain increased vitality when wielding a sword, gain bonus vitality based on a portion of your power and condition damage. In this term it is the best since we are one, we want to give you the 120 vitality on it. So you're getting a bit more, you're getting a bit more stamina, makes you a bit, st a bit more sustainable since your HP is not that high as you see on the bottom with 12.8k, that's nothing. Then we have Swift Revenge, gain swiftness when using a dual attack. Deal extra damage to enemies while under the effect of swiftness or super speed. So basically every time you attack someone, you gain swiftness. Every time you give yourself swiftness, you deal more damage. And you will keep up with swiftness all fight long on your own, so it's hard for enemies to catch you. And you play with elements of rage. Gain a damage bonus for a period of time when attuned to a single element. Gain precision based on the percentage of vitality. So but while you are just being in one tune, that means you are not having both two at the same time, you have the elements of rage and you get 10% more damage. Together with the fire tune, where you get more power when you have all the might, you will get very very strong when you are just, for example, being on fire in this, mo in this modus. So, let's go through the armor really quick. On this character, since I don't play V for my own, I just have exotic gear right now. Exotic gear, you go for Berserker stats. You go for full Berserker on your Weaver. You can go for some Marauder stats, depending if you want to be a bit more tanky and you're a bit of a beginner, you can go a bit more Marauder and you go more glassier, the better you get on your on your go on your player. On the stuff you're taking energy and stomach and bloodlust. So you're going for energy to dodge and to uh, if you attune some something else and you get more power for everything you kill and hopefully you're not dying. And as a rune for, for uh, as a rune here, it's pretty easy as a rune. You can go for the scholar rune. It's like the main rune for for the weaver. So it is a rune that gives you ferocity and power. And while you're not getting attacked, you are over the threshold and you're getting a lot, a l really a lot of stuff for you. So that's good. So the scholar rune would be the best. But you can also, if you're pretty poor for example you can also go for something like might rune or strange rune like all of that kind of stuff is possible but i would recommend to go for the scholar rune it's expensive but you just need it one time right um, if you want you can also equip a second stuff with for example force and energy on it so you have five percent more damage on it could be something you can use you can use ether force and energy or using stamina uh, bloodlust and energy so basically it's up to you what you want to do and if you are a beginner, I recommend you to go for a bit more Marauder pieces, like for example, Complete Armor Marauder, Weapons Berserker, Rings Marauder, and Berserker, the rest of everything. So you have a bit more HP, and also the Marauder stats are giving you a bit more precision. So you have a bit more critical chance, what also helps by getting crits done. Okay, the next part on it would be the skills. Let's go through the skills. We will start with our <sighs> utility skills. The first skill is Aether, uh, Aether Renewal. Cure a condition and heal yourself by with every pulse. It at eight, eight pulses and it gives conditions away from you. So it's a condition cleanse for you and it is healing you a lot. So with eight pulses you keep healing while you're trying to escape. It's the go-to in World vs. World. 
You go for lightning flesh. Let's go for the uh, like. This is the heal, as you see. You have you're healing yourself. You're pure in condition. Then you have lightning flesh. You can blink away from enemies to escape. Something that you need a lot in World vs. World if someone wants to snipe you. Then you have Ballerina Twist of Fate. It gives you super speed and it is a stun break. So you can invade for a second. You stun break yourself and you get super speed from it. Makes you really strong. So you should try to go for it. And you have Mist Form. Morph into Invulnerability. Vaporous Mist of a Brief Time. So basically it gives you movement speed. And it is a stun break and you are not being targetable, so you're not getting damage, but you can hit by, for example, lines or something in front of you that sees you at the end, but you're not getting any damage. And as ultimate, we are taking Weave Self, Tailboard Victory, so temporary, temporary reduce the recharge time of attunements while gaining bonuses for attuning to new elements. Successfully attuning to all elements and distance and grants perfect weave. So we are taking that because we are taking Weaver at the end and if you see Weave yourself, gather the elements to become an ultimate being, perfect weaving, 10% boon duration, 20% healing increase, to others 20% condition damage, minus 20% incoming damage, 50% movement speed, so it's really really strong if you know how to use it, plus you are trading it with tailored victory, release all your woven elements and, and end your weave self stance, causing gravity and unreal around you. So you're going for the damage, you're having floating, and it's unblockable. Really good. So we are now tuned to fire stance. Fire attunement is giving you attuned to fire, gain heavy damage and burning abilities. You gain might here, so let's test it here really quick. We're doing 111 with our might. So see we're getting might by just attacking this golems now. It's hitting up to five targets, and every time you attack you get more might. Every time you get more might, you get more damage through your traits. So, a skill that you should always hold on cooldown is Lava Fontaine. Lava Fontaine is your second skill, it is a little a little attack, like a little uh, field that you have. Make uh, make Lava erupt from the target area. It is damage, it is, a it is a duration, and it burns everything, and it is a fire combo field. So you put it under enemies, you see it's a damage field on them, so it's good. It has a low cooldown, so you should always keep that on enemies. Also it has a 1200 range, so you can keep it on the maximum. Then you have Flame Burst, Burst Foes at the target location. So let's test it really quick. So you're going for a boom and you're shooting that on the enemy location. You have to target the enemy for that please. You put, you're inflicting burning it all in it is also for 5 targets and in 240 range you're inflicting it to more than one target that you're going for. Your fourth skill is your defending skill in fire. So you're going forward for example, they're pushing and you can dodge back and then even go for example for a blink and you're being out of any trouble you want to be. So it's burning people that are going there, it's an invade, it's an interval of one second, so you're going away of any trouble you have there. And then your strongest skill and your main damage skill that is like 60 plus percent damage, Meteor Shower. Meteor Shower is like 60% and more of your damage of your Weaver, so it has to be placed really really well. If you're failing that, your damage is going low, really low. Then let's go to F2 really quick, well I will... I will explain the uh, uh, attunements of Weaver as uh, last, so we will go through the waters really quick. 111 is damage and healing yourself, so it is not that much used as a Weaver in open fields. You don't really need that at the end, it gives you a bit of uh, region and might also, but you should never attack with 111 of Water Blast, it's not worth it anymore. Then we have Ice Spike, it's a big AoE field that gives vulnerability and it's also a blast combo blast finisher if a commander calls for blasting. So you can hit people there, people are get, as you see here on the thing, it gets vulnerability and damage. Then we have our third skill, it's called Geysir, create a Geysir to heal uh, nearby people. You can put that for example on a melee train when they are pushing, so they are getting healing from you. And it's a combo field water. Then you have a big water that you can put. Here, for example, it's a frozen ground. Sorry, it's a frozen ground. The big water comes at last. It chills target in a very big area, has a huge cooldown, is unblockable. So you, and when the commander is calling for CC, this is your go-to skill. You can stop them from pushing with this skill. And then we have a very, very big water. It's a regeneration. It's a 2490 heal over 4 seconds. It's a condition remove on 5 targets. It has 3 pulses. That means it's just worth it when you stay inside of it. So be sure that you're placing it correctly and you know how the commander is moving. So for example, I show you the 4th skill again. Here now all of them are frozen. So this is really good. Chill is a very strong skill. Uh, you People cannot move that quick. So you can use that very wisely and hope it works. 
So for example, like you can also go for your third skill, for example, and then drop your gay, uh, drop your uh, ice spike on it, and you're blasting water on people, and that means you're getting people with healing. So you can also support some people if you want. At the end, you have no healing power, but if you have every everything wasted and you want to heal someone or CC someone, you can also put a quick heal between of it in your rotation, so you can help out with that. Okay, let's go for the third skill. Let's go for Arcane. Arcane is giving you swiftness and might. So, we have an AoE attack that is very strong. It's a bouncing, it bounces three times. So you can hit that on everything on 1200 range, by the way. Then you have a second skill that is, an, is also a hit that also blinds. Like, it charges a light surge that is damaging and blinds nearby foes uh, when it discharges. Then we have Gust. Gust pushes foes backwards when the burst of air. It's a CC again. So when a commander calls for CC on the enemies, CC on the enemies, you can put that forward and the enemies are getting knocked back or you're breaking their stability. That is very important when a commander calls for CC and you can help a commander a lot with it. Then you have Windborn Speed gives out swiftness a lot so you should try to go for that when a commander goes for swiftness or you're just keeping it on cooldown on yourself to just speed up the people. Today with the mounts normally you don't need it but in a combat you can still use it to give yourself a lot of movement. 12 seconds swiftness is a lot on 5 targets, so it's pretty good. And then you have the, one of the most important skills for CC, it's called Static Field. Static Field is unblockable, it's a lightning field, it hits 10 targets and it stuns for 2 seconds. So it needs to react, people need to react for it, that means a Guardian needs to cleanse and stun break people, and that wastes them cooldown. So think about if like 4 Weavers are doing that at the same time, that would be 40 people stunned for 2 seconds by entering or going out of it. So it's a really strong skill, so use it please when the commander is calling for CC and you are on Era Tune. It's also 1200 range and like I said, it's unblockable. Very very strong thing. So let's go for our last attune, we are going for Earth. Earth is more a bit of a condi 111, so you're 111ing with weakness, bleeding... Um, well, the 111 is not that strong. But you're going for protection with it. So if you're in a defensive spot or you're trying to escape, you can go for it, for example. And then, for example, your second skill is a big AE that cripples and blinds. Well, nobody is getting out. You see, all of them are bleeding and, and crippling now. So it's also a very big CC and the cooldown is not that high. So you can use that and keep it spamming where people are pushing. Then you have mag magnetic aura. So magnetic aura is around you, so you're reflecting all the med uh, all the projectiles that are coming into you, and you have to click it again to get it out, or it gets from alone out. Pretty good skill, good usable if if someone is pew pewing you, because normally a ranger or a revenant wanna hunt you, and that turn just go for it and defend yourself. So then we have a ground that people cannot go through. We have an earth line. People, this is CC. Go for it. Help the commander with. Getting the stability of enemies away and stop their melee train from pushing. Pretty important. And you have Shockwave. Create a Shockwave that bleeds and immobilizes your targets. So you're going for it. You immobilize everyone in front with the Shocking Wave. Up to 5 targets. It is really really strong in World Wars as well to go for it. Because it forces again the enemy guardians to react instantly. If they don't react instantly, enemies cannot move. Lockdown target can be, die, can be caught out instantly for example. It's really really strong. So you can immobilize and cripple them with this tune. Okay, so now we went through F1, F2, F3 and F4. Basically that would be if you would play core elementalist, that would be your go-to. Because you don't have Weaver. We are going for Weaver in the term because we have two attunes. So we have for example Fire and Earth. Now we have one and two here from Fire because we are attuned to Fire and Earth. And we have the th third skill, it's called Pyroclastic Blast. Dual attack, launch a molten rock that devastates an area. So let's use it one time. So we are bombing it down. So it's a really big rock, it's burning down, it's burning, it's pulsing, it gives swiftness, and it has an impact damage and it gives barrier because it is a defensive and offensive skill at the same time. Da. Then we are fully on fire again with our meteor shower. Meteor shower very very strong, you know, so use it. So let's go for F1 and F2. F1 and F2 is giving you Pressure Blast. It send out of a Purious Projectile that heals allies that passes through. This projectile violently explode if they hit the ground. So, Barrier, Damage, Regeneration, Swiftness for people. Let's also use that. 
so it's something that you can use when you're going out of fire for example and your squad needs heal you can also help with healing every if your heal really matters at the end right so then at the end you can also go for fire and water then you're going for uh then you have the first two skills plus the water at the end so you can switch that which skills you have where depending on what's your first and your second attunement and the third skill is always changing then let's go for the our third skill a very very strong skill i recommend to use a lot this is one of your strongest skills plasma blast so go for it it has a lot of damage it gives swiftness and barrier so use that on your targets please five targets to hit with it 1200 range and while being attuned to air you can go still for the meteor shower as you see here or you're turning it around again and you have a static field at the end and you're going for lava fontaine damage and 111 as you see so now we went through all of that skills let's go for water really quick and we go for air really quick so now with water and air you're going for monsoon monsoon is giving you chill region barrier damage swiftness that is pretty good so let's use that really quick put it down there is a monsoon now going through the enemies that is chilling the enemies healing and barriering our people and giving swiftness so if you are on air and water you can use that skill something you can use it's up to you if you want to use it and if you have a right situation for it if we have lightning and we have earth we are going for pile driver after a short channel launch a hyper fast boulder that decimates foes in its path it's also damage and as you see also barrier and it is a piercing skill so let's go for it really quick and we are putting it forward and it's hitting up to five targets it's a damage skill nothing else on that point giving barrier and that's it let's go for air uh, for water and earth now and water and earth is giving you lahar creating an area that cripples and damages enemies so you can go for a, M for a damage area that also gives that also is pulsing on them and it's pretty so you'd also see seeing the enemy so keep doing that you can see a lot as an elementalist that's a lot worth good so we went through all the combinations really quick mostly you will find yourself to be honest in air and fire and or mostly in fire because you need your meteor shower but you should keep rotating your skills and always be active with it and you will find out your own rotation at the end what skills you want to use at the end if i know that correctly you can stop start it wait a second you can do that somehow wait a second i will do it one more time like you can go for example for a meteor shower starting the meteor shower why parting away as you've seen here and now i started the meteor shower from in front there and i blinked away and i still casted it so you can go out of a range there for example when you saw that i will go for it one more time really quick when the meteor shower comes of cooldown guys 20 seconds for blink though sadly So you're going for it for example and putting it down see I can I can go back now and putting the meteor shower in front So the meteor shower is out of range placed in front while I'm going back It starts casting in front while I'm going back so you can put more distance between you and your enemies So for example the enemies are pushing now through this choke here and I know that they are pushing through here I go for example here for I'm putting my earth here then I'm going back to fire putting my line there then they are pushing through and blinking behind them for example putting one 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 on them i know that they are here so i can do my i can put a meteor shower on them and i keep spamming it let's go to uh, let's go to another trade and healing my people helping them dodging back because then we do ballerina mode healing ourselves for example now they are pushing on us so we are shifting away while we are swapping we can swap our attunes while we are doing that we heal our bodies really quick going back into fire hitting the people again so always be active with switching your attunes like the, the cooldown is not that much and you can keep that up all the time something that i do what i want from elementalists in fights okay let's go through that really quick if you have any questions so far feel free to hit me up on my discord hit me up on my stream hit me up on my channel if you want or in game with patce.4907 on you i will just link it under the channel then what is your job in fights so as a weaver you have several fights uh, you can either go with the commander what is really hard a lot of times and go for uh, trying to attack from behind the commander and see and anticipate what he's doing and 
try to attack the enemies and deal as much damage as you can. But most of the time that's not working because you're way too squishy and that's not your job. Your job is as a DPS glass cannon, like you have the most DPS in the game because revenants are more for spiking, scourges are more for uh, permanent damage all the time, like con continually damage with corrupts, but your DPS is way higher if you know what you're doing and if you have all the boons. That's why I would recommend you also to have a revenant in your party to keep the fury up and keep the might up and keep all the boons up because every boon that you have is giving you more damage. That's also about the defensive boons that a guardian can give you. So the more boons you have, the more damage you have, the better you can do stuff. You go up to a very good amount of damage on this term, about 3300 plus on power. So your, what I do and what you should do too is learn how to anticipate the fight. See what the enemy frontline is doing. Look what the enemy range is doing that you're not getting caught by any ranger, revenant or something else. Your job it is to bump from the side and stay alive as long as you can. It's also very important, in my opinion, to look what the commander is doing and put CC and help him by channeling stuff down and also calling it on voice to support him, while you're also searching for a way to, to do the maximum damage by, not, by taking like 0% of damage. That is your job, so never walk through bombs and if you're forced to, use your mist form, use your arcane, uh, arcane blink or something else. Also there is so for example there's also some other skills you can use for example what i use sometimes is armor of earth protect yourself with earth armor and gain protection and stability i sometimes and sometimes i also use conjure fiery sword, great sword because every time we have a sword we're also getting more damage plus the great sword is really really strong so you can decide on yourself if you take as an ultimate skill the weave yourself or conjure fiery great sword it's up to you and what i also sometimes use instead of them mist form i'm using the arcane wave because it blasts foes in the target area with an energy wave for critical damage plus if you trade it it also immobilizes the enemies what can be used really well when they have no eggs on it they get immobilized so that is something you can use also in that kind of case as buff food for elementalists you can take for example very cheap buff food um the dragon breath bands they are not that expensive they are giving you power and they're giving you ferocity so you can use that if you don't have better one or ascended buff food and please take power oil every percentage of damage matters what i do mostly as a weaver when i see what the well like i'm always moving cross for example melee pushing right i go left melee pushing left i go right if i see that the enemy is pushing in me because i'm the range now i'm trying to blink behind my commander look what the commander is doing and going for that kind of a stuff for example, let's say the enemies are pushing through this choke and my commander is pushing over to the other side here. And I know that they are coming. I'm dropping my meteor shower then first, for example. Let's let's say, wait a second, I'm dropping here my meteor shower. I'm dropping the meteor shower now from here, see, from a far distance. Then I go forward, twist your fate, blinking to the other side, switching, my, switching meanwhile, putting heals on my front line and keeping supporting from the other side as a maximum side because the enemies are on the other side. So I'm trying to support the maximum out, putting a static field for my enemies that they cannot push. Swiftness, my front line. They are pushing now, so I'm using my mist form to go through them again or something that I'm not getting hit and trying to position myself all the time. And it's very important, guys, to not stay in damage. Just use the 4 and then the 5th skill and you will hit a meteor shower from far away. You see that? The meteor shower is getting hit from like nearly 2000 distance. So you can be safe while casting that, while going offensive. So you can also use the meteor shower to clear siege for a commander. That's also very important. So if you have any questions about the Weaver on its own, about gameplay, there will be uploaded a gameplay video later on about how to play the game and with a lot of commentaries. I couldn't do that today, so that will follow up, follow up at the end. I hope you enjoyed this basic guide for Weaver with a lot of information about the skills, the traits, the basic movement and what you should do in terms of gear and how you can use some of the tricks. And I hope you would like the video, you're joining my Twitch and you're following me and I hope we see us in the chat then. Have a good time and thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye bye.